On the 24th of January in 2017, detectives from Irish Gardie sat opposite an industrial warehouse in Green Oak Business Park in Rathcool, West Dublin. Intelligence had been received that suggested the unit was being used as a safe house for the all-powerful Kinnahan Cartel, and that there were likely items of interest being stored there. When police entered the premises, their find was significant. The nine revolvers, four semi-automatic pistols, a submachine gun, an assault rifle, and more than 4,000 rounds of ammunition would have caused havoc on the streets, as Ireland was at the height of a bloody gangland feud at that particular time. Whilst it wasn't an unusual occurrence for police in Ireland to uncover pockets of weapons and other illegal contraband, the subsequent chain of events that played out would rock the Irish underworld to its core and play a major role in dismantling one of the biggest drug cartels in Europe. Alongside the weapons hall, Gardy also seized documentation that identified shipments between a UK-based freight transport company called Ebrix Limited and a different organization named FAR Logistics, located at 3 Modular Court, Four Ashes Business Park, Wolverhampton. Experience told investigators that they were potentially uncovering a smuggling route and enlisted the help of the National Crime Agency in examining the extensive hall of paperwork. After checking the legitimacy of the documents with Ebrix Limited, the NCA began an investigation into the names listed as the receiving parties at FAR Logistics. Two men named Gary Vickery and Daniel Canning. In the afternoon of the 2nd of October 2017, customs officials on duty at the import freight examination area, Easter Docks Dover, seized a consignment. The load was being transported by a Polish driver working for transporters, AGMA. The note of the consignment stated that it came from Romania. The driver had been heard saying to officials, I loaded it at Ziegler. The load contained two large tarmac removal machines, which were examined that same evening by customs officials. The officials dismantled the machine's casing, removing a series of 32 mm nuts from the sides. The machinery had been specifically altered to store and conceal drugs. Inside the interior cavity of the first machine was 200 packages of herbal cannabis, with plastic wrappings endorsed Rolex. Inside the second machine was also 200 packages of herbal cannabis, with plastic wrappings endorsed Manchester United. In addition, the second machine contained 15 green blocks containing cocaine and endorsed 54. Also found inside the second machine was a black box magnetically attached to the inner wall containing a GPS tracking device. This had F1 etched on it. A white Virgin SIM card was recovered in the side of the black box device. The industrial premises identified as used by the relevant companies were searched by NCA officers the day after the Dover seizure. On the 3rd of October 2017, Unit 16 RDW development at Red Mill Trading Estate, Rigby Street, was found to have been leased to Daniel Canning since 16th of February 2016. When his premises were searched, police found a wooden crate that contained a large transformer that had been adapted for internal concealment. Hidden within that transformer was a large black holdall bag. This was found to contain a Smith & Wesson 357 revolver and two boxes, containing a total of 85 rounds of 38 caliber wad cutter ammunition. The firearm and ammunition were later tested and fired to confirm that these were live rounds and that the firearm was functioning. A wet and dry swab was taken from the top of the transformer unit and was subsequently analyzed for DNA and matched to Daniel Canning. The transformer itself was later examined and was found to have been lined with lead. It had originally been manufactured and purchased from a German company based in Mönchengladbach. 
Its inner core, which would originally be immersed in oil, had then been removed, together with any residual oil, and the lead lining added as a means of avoiding detection. The transformer had also been recently spray-painted on the side and top. A number of other items were seized from Unit 16. Amongst them, nine further magnetic black GPS tracking devices and various SIM push-out cards. At Vickery's rented address in Solihull, the NCA found 25 kilogram barrels of boric acid powder, which is often cut with cocaine, along with 43,000 pounds and 100,000 euros in cash. Small amounts of cash, phones, and encrypted communications devices were found at Canning's home in Dickens Heath, outside Birmingham. Both Vickery and Canning weren't well known to police, and detectives were convinced that although they were involved in the smuggling, they were not sophisticated criminals capable of masterminding the plot. The Blackberry phones that were discovered at Canning's apartment were examined for evidence. Encrypted messages between the pair and an unknown Mr. Big showed that Vickery and Canning were subordinates, taking orders from someone far higher up the chain of command. The man in question was none other than the head of UK operations for the Kinnahan crime cartel, Thomas Bomber Kavanagh. The crime boss, who once considered himself to be untouchable, was not the cause of his own downfall. Instead, it was the sloppy communication practices of his associates that resulted in his arrest. Using encrypted BlackBerry mobile devices, the Kinnahan-led gang were able to safely organize the importation and distribution of drugs worth tens of millions of euros. As an added precaution, they used nicknames to thwart detection by police. Kavanaugh was known as the Gaffer, Plasma, or New Two, while Jelly was a nickname for Gary Vickery and Smiley for Daniel Canning. The men also used coded words to communicate openly with one another. Paper was in reference to cash. The flat was the code name for the Netherlands. The sun for Spain. Cocaine as phones and cannabis was jackets. One example of how the men communicated is seen in an exchange regarding a cash handover in an underground car park in Barcelona. A text from Kavanagh to Canning stated, just got him to say that he's been told not to move until all is in order. All was supposed to be ready three weeks ago. That paper is not to be left alone, full stop. And despite never obtaining a mobile belonging to Kavanagh, police were eventually able to crack their coded language linking him to be the top man within the massive drugs operation. Matt Holm, Deputy Director of Investigations for the National Crime Agency, said Kavanagh's associates had a practice of forwarding their messages to other members of the group. This left an audit trail to the main guy, he said. What led to Thomas Kavanagh's downfall really was sloppy practices by his group, which led us to him. Communications between the group also provided evidence that they had been involved in at least four more drug importations prior to the Dover seizure in October 2017, bringing the estimated street value of cocaine importations by the group up to 23.4 million pounds. Cannabis importations over the same period are estimated to have been worth around 6.4 million pounds. The transport of the drugs across Europe was a slick machine and used both legitimate and shadow companies, with many having no clue that they were delivering anything other than ordinary machine parts. The gang used the names of three different firms for the operation and were assisted by a couple of foreign nationals who took responsibility for sourcing the drugs in Europe. They were named in court as FAR Logistics, at Unit 3, Modular Court, Wolverhampton. MB Distribution, registered also at Unit 3, Modular Court, Wolverhampton. And RWD Development, at Unit 16, Red Mill Trading Estate, Wednesbury. 
There was no evidence of legitimate business being run from any of these addresses. FAR Logistics is a registered company, but its managing director has confirmed that it has never operated from Unit 3. And although there were signs outside Unit 3 for MB distribution, there is no such registered business at the address. Ebrix UK Limited, already mentioned, is a legitimate transportation and logistics company based in Staffordshire. Ebrix was contracted by FAR Logistics, MB Distribution, and RWD Development to deliver a number of loads from mainland Europe to Unit 3 and Unit 16 between November 2016 and October 2017. For each consignment, the consigner named was the first foreign national assisting the gang, Emmanuel Rosenzweig, at an address in Romania. All of these consignments were palletized goods described as machine parts of different weights. The goods would be unloaded and checked off the manifest when the lorries arrived and the consignees would then be contacted and advised that the consignments were ready for collection. Ebrix subcontracted the transportation of the deliveries from mainland Europe to a German company called Ziegler, which made regular deliveries to Ebrix twice a week, using lorries traveling through Germany to the Ebrix UK warehouse in Burntwood. Documents showed Rosenzweig had been a customer of Ziegler since 2014, and the last transport operation for Emmanuel Rosenvig was on Friday 29th, September 2017. Emmanuel Rosenzweig is an alias for Nikolai Wall. Kavanagh had significant contact with Wall during the indictment period, as will be addressed in further detail. The second gang member that was based overseas was a Polish national named in court only as Zed. Zed had organized GPS trackers from his native country, while he also had payments sent to his business in Barcelona, Spain. The trackers gave Bomber peace of mind that there wasn't going to be any drugs or cash mysteriously vanishing while in transit. This proved a useful tool for the gang. However, they were even more useful in the hands of law enforcement. It was later revealed that the NCA had analyzed the tracker found concealed in the machinery at Dover and found it activated in Poland and first moved to Dublin to the vicinity of the home of Zed. It then traveled to Birmingham and on to the home of Vickery. From there it moved to Birmingham Airport before transferring to Unit 16, where it stayed for 11 days. From there, it traveled from Dover to Calais and on to Belgium to Gobo Logistics. The next day, it was on the move again to Holland, where it remained steady for eight days before it returned to Gobo, then on to Germany to Ziegler. On September 30th, as the NCA lay in wait, it departed Germany and made its way through Europe and from Calais to Dover, where the load was picked up by police. Although the gang was eventually snared by authorities, it is thought that they were successful on at least four other occasions. The first shipment that could be traced was sent from Ziegler to FAR Logistics on 28th of October, 2016. On the 10th of November, 2016, Vickery appears to be in New York, as evidenced by the nature of the messages sent to his wife. That day, he sent her a WhatsApp message showing a photograph of a group of men, including himself and Kavanagh, gathering in apparent celebration with the message, Ha ha, this is worth the money. Fast forward five years, four months and 18 days later, Vickery would be pleading guilty at Ipswich Crown Court after being arrested by the Guardia Civil in Lanzarote, where he had lived since 2017. Vickery, known as Flash Gary, who owned a limited edition Sunseeker Superhawk powerboat, featured in the James Bond movie Quantum of Solace, came to police attention in Spain after he began buying up high-end vessels and trying to muscle in on the island's long-established pleasure cruise industry. When a catfish pleasure boat went missing from a marina on the island, 
A complaint was made by the boat's owner, Lee Pallister, to the Guardia Civil. It is understood that the Spanish police were investigating Vickery's dodgy dealings at the same time as the businessman was wanted in the UK and had been convicted in absentia for drug and money laundering offences. Vickery and wife Nicola moved to Lanzarote in recent years, leaving behind a string of businesses in the UK, including a commercial car company. On Lanzarote, the couple owned a number of boats and yachts, as well as having property interests. Thomas Bomber Kavanagh lived with his family in a fortified mansion, complete with reinforced doors and bulletproof glass in Tamworth, Staffordshire, from where he ran his criminal empire. When the NCA raided the property in January 2019, officers found numerous weapons, including an illegal stun gun, for which he was eventually given a three-year jail sentence. Officers also seized cash worth around £35,000 in various denominations, including sterling, euros and Emirati dirhams, which had been stuffed into drawers, bags and down the back of sofa cushions. Kavanagh and his family also took annual trips to Calador, on the island of Mallorca, where he is believed to have owned property. Small amounts of cash and further phones and encrypted communications devices were found at Daniel Canning's home in Dickens Heath. Information on those devices showed Kavanagh was heading up the criminal enterprise, with messages between the group referring to him as the gaffer. He was also in contact with criminal contacts in Europe to orchestrate shipments. Kavanaugh was first arrested during a search in Dublin in January 2017, after the discovery of weapons in Rathcool, which marked the beginning of the end for his empire. He lay low for a period, but when police still hadn't swooped for him two years on, he assumed the investigation into him had gone flat. He treated friends and family to an all-inclusive holiday to Mexico for the festive period at the end of 2018, but was subsequently arrested at Birmingham Airport as he returned to the UK on the 12th of January, 2019. Daniel Canning voluntarily attended court for his initial sentencing hearing on Monday 21st of August, 2021 and flew Dublin to Stansted at 7.50 a.m., where he had expected to be arrested upon arrival. However, he got into Stansted at 9.20 a.m. and passed through airport security without any problems, and found himself on the street outside Stansted Airport, wondering why he hadn't been cuffed. When the case finally came to sentencing on the 22nd of March, 2022, just over five years since that fateful day in Rathcool, Kavanagh was sentenced to 21 years in prison. Canning was jailed for 19 and a half years. And Vickery got a 20-year sentence. If you've enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe to support the channel. It allows us to produce more content for you to enjoy. Please stay tuned for more videos. Coming very soon.